We're here today to talk about diversity in the tech industry. But first, let me take a selfie. Uh, a lot of us are using selfie apps regularly, taking selfies, pictures of ourselves. But a selfie is not, is not just longer a picture that you are taking of yourself. Most of the popular apps for taking and sharing images, selfies or not, are using filters. Some of the filters will give you flowers in your hair or put on a nice hat or put your face on a teddy bear costume that is dancing around. But what most of them also are doing is to manipulate the way you look. They will, for instance, remove your wrinkles, your pimples, your um, eczema or redness and other features and, um, that we normally have in our faces. They will remove them. But they don't stop there. The filters will also make your eyes bluer, make your nose narrower and your skin wider. These apps are sending very strong signals to its users about what someone is expecting them to look like. My name is Lina Moseng. I'm working for the Norwegian government um, for NAV, which is the Norwegian Labor and Welfare Administration, where I'm doing um, I'm working on our Kubernetes-based platform. Uh, it's open source, uh, and we call it nice.io. Uh, I'm also, besides that, I'm also um, working with teaching kids programming and trying to introduce coding and IT into the schools. Uh, because I'm very passionate about making IT and computer science knowledge um, in the population higher. My name is Sandas, and I have a background in robotics and intelligence systems. Currently working on an open source cloud solution for research and education at the University of Oslo. In my spare time, I'm the deputy chairwoman of the Norwegian Java User Group and one of the core organizers of the Java Zone Conference, which is the European biggest community-driven IT conference in Norway. We all use technology, and it's deeply affecting our culture, society, and politics. By just looking at the time people spend on their phones, on different apps and websites, we can easily determine how tech affects our lives. And technology is, of course, much more than surfing online. The work that we put in technology is really powerful. Those who work with tech can shape it and can influence society. Those who create technology, technological products and systems can also affect the type of benefits of those systems. But, technological, but technologists are not always aware of their users. That's because most of them are from an exclusive group with the same background, and they think that their solution may suit everyone without actually knowing their users or their needs. Choices that we as tech developers make in our products have a deep impact on our lives. There is never ending progress in tech, which is great. Technology makes almost everything easier. And we developers have good intentions. We want to do something good for the future. We want to help people. But having a good intention doesn't mean that we are not responsible for the negative consequences that our products may have. We put so much effort into our works. And we attempt to be realistic by testing and criticizing our own solutions by reviewing the technical architecture security, privacy, design, and usability. But do we do all those things in a correct way? In multiple ways, we're not meeting the needs of our users. For instance, we see it in the massive lack of universally designed solutions that we have created and still are creating. 
for instance, just take a look at how um, the web pages and applications that developers develop, how they are barely usable and, or not at all for people with, with reduced vision or, or no vision at all. And we see this in applications and systems that we create for our own use as well. For instance, take a look at all of the dashboards that um, or other tools that we use to visualize uh, our systems, to dashboards for visualizing uh, success rates or error rates. Most of these systems are using red and green for visualizing error or success. And while that might be uh, very um, usable and good for people with good vision, with perfect vision, um, if, you ha if you're colorblind, that, that won't paint the same picture because you might not have a good, it, you might have a hard time um, dif differentiating between green and red. We all know a senior person. How easy for a senior person to buy a smart gadget and setting up it without any help? And how is it for a, sm uh, for a senior person to download an app without a high chance of clicking on an unauthorized app, which may cause them several problems? And this is not only a software issue, but also hardware. Many smart screens doesn't respond on weak press or hand with wrinkles. But if the whole purpose of the technology is to make the life easier and make people more independent, Shouldn't they be able to do and use technology on their own? Developing systems for smaller groups needs to consider their actual needs and capabilities. And we need to talk about such problems to make everyone aware. With the automation of uh, several tasks, we see the increased need for and use of chatbots. And we often humanize them. We give them a name, an avatar, and a gender. And we see that we often tend to give uh, the chatbots a female identity, especially if it's doing receptionist kind of work or helping out at online stores. And meanwhile, if the chatbot is, uh, chatbot's function is to uh, do economical counseling, for instance, in an ba online bank, we rather tend to give it a male identity. So we are reinforcing the stereotype that um, a front desk receptionist kind of works and service occupations is a woman's job, while economy is a man's occupation. Our machine learning algorithms are training on biased data sets. And this is difficult because the world is skewed. The world is not equal. So if we're training on data sets that is mirroring the real world, we have to be aware of this. We have to consider whether we should uh, change our, uh, and make our data sets uh, accordingly so that um, and correct for these inequalities in our data sets and in our algorithms so that they are not reinforcing the inequalities that we have in the world or even amplifying them. We are projecting and extending uh, our prejudices through the, our technological solutions. For instance, do even chatbots need a gender? Could we instead give them um, names that are not tied to genders. And we as an industry that is impacting the society in the way that we do, we have a responsibility to not reinforce inequalities. But we, when we as developers are too alike, we see that we have a hard time fi um, figuring out the needs of others. I can use that one. In, in the tech industry, 
there's one important thing that we don't think enough about, which is the way that technology affects our society and culture, and the way that society should also project into our solutions. As technology is too important for our lives, it is crucial that we reflect the society into the products and systems that we create. Those who work with tech should be as diverse as their users. So in tech industry, like in many other industries, there are several group of people who are not represented. Worldwide diversity issues impact workplaces. As a human being, our gender is a part of our strengths, yet it is often used against women and people who prefer to not ident identify themselves as a male or female. And being a minority is much more than genders. People with different ethnicity, culture, interest, sexual orientation, body size, age, physical ability or disability, members of non-dominated groups are facing barriers and discrimination every single day. And this is due to lack of the diverse teams. We have a problem because minorities are leaving the tech industry uh, at a higher rate than the majority. Studies show that unfair behavior and treatment uh, is the number one reason for people uh, that when people leave. <clears throat> And LGBTQ people, that is uh, lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, um, or questioning queer, uh, they were most likely, according to studies, to be bullied and experience public humiliation at their workplace. And said that, that, and most of them said that that contributed to their decision to leave the industry. <clears throat> and employees in tech companies were significantly more likely to leave due to unfairness than employees in similar positions in other companies than tech, uh, in companies that is not in tech industries. In the tech industry, the quit rate for women is, as twi is twice as high than for men. 41% compared to 17%. Study shows that over a quarter of companies in tech industry have no women at all when it comes to manager and CEOs. Reports also show that 80% of women tell that they like their job, while 56% of them leave their careers after 10 to 20 years in their organization. Women usually get less paid, get less technical tasks, and are judged negatively for the same behavior that men get positively. One of the common reasons why minorities quit is the, genders, is the wage differences between genders. Globally, women earn 23% less than men for the exact same job. Men are also offered higher bonuses on average than women with equivalent performance. Leaders have the power to reduce such barriers, barriers that women and other underrepresented groups face every day. They can have an impact on reducing isolation and including minorities in networking and decisions making in the organization. Lack of role models, mentors and sponsors are among the other reasons why minorities quit. So we have to talk about the elephant in the room, which is, uh, <clears throat> sorry which is the culture that we have in our industry, in our communities, and at our, organ, our organizations. We have a problematic culture, a toxic culture, that makes minorities feel uncomfortable at their workplace. 
And this is a problem because we desperately need more diversity among our developers. We want those different discussions, thoughts, and insights. Um, and we don't get th those discussions without having people with different perspectives. But it's tough. It will cost you more to be the one who have a different opinion that sees things differently. If you're not feeling comfortable, if you're not feeling safe at work. And when talking about the bad culture that we face in our industries, we have to visit the Me Too movement. The movement started virally a couple of years ago uh, with women sharing stories about being sexually harassed at their workplace uh, or in um, work kind of environments. And they used the hashtag Me Too. And women reported about sexual harassment at the workplace, in conferences, at job interviews, uh, at Christmas parties, and tech conferences, at the office. The reports also uncovered that a lot of the colleagues that were witnessing the harassment didn't intervene. Or perhaps they just ignored it, played along, or laughed. And those who told their colleagues or managers about, um, about the harassment they were exposed to um, were told that, in too many cases, they were told that they were exaggerating. It's OK. It's not that bad. Through social media, fem female developers shared their stories about being sexually harassed, uh, not only in Silicon Valley, but also here in Europe and in Norway. In small startups and in well-founded companies. In Norway, we got an own hashtag for it, for the developers and otherwise technologists who were reporting Me Too incidents. It was system down, meaning that we cannot Ignore it. We have to acknowledge that this is happening in our industry and also in Europe. It's not only a Silicon Valley problem. But there are several reports and studies showing that women are not the only, only ones that are being harassed. And sexual harassment is not the only kind of discriminations that minorities are facing. For instance, as a minority, you might get ignored or interrupted repeatedly at meetings. So you might feel like your opinion isn't valued equally as your colleagues. And if you raise your, word, uh, your voice because you still want to be heard, uh, and your colleagues perceive you as angry or aggressive, because you raised your voice, and instead focusing on the fact that you raised your voice on, on, on your appearance instead of your actual thoughts and meaning. And if you, as a minority, don't smile, uh, the chances of you being viewed as mean is significantly higher than if you were a white man. Or what about when sexist, racist, homophobic, and otherwise discriminating jokes is a regular part of your, lunch, your team's lunch break conversations? Well, you might start eating lunch at your desk instead so that you don't have to face the discomfort of those jokes. And when you're out traveling on a business trips and your colleagues decide that they want to go to a strip, strip club, you might feel like the odd one out. Harassment is more than the sexual kind. Physical harassment can also be violence. But we also have emotional harassment, which we often refer to as bullying. Bullying can be repeating uh, intentional exclusion of someone. Or calling people names, names that hurt. Or refusing to call someone by their name. 
it can be offensive jokes, inappropriate comments, or spreading rumors. And emotional harassment can also be challenging, ignoring, or um, undermining every opinion that the target has. And employees in a workplace where say, harassment is going on can also feel the harassment. And they can be, um, because of the harassment that is going on, the other colleagues around can uh, be affected by it because of the negative culture that will around um, will occur because of the harassment. Meaning that if you're at a workplace where harassment is happening, it might spread. And we have to talk about housework, office housework. We tend to assign minorities more office housework at our work uh, and the non-technical tasks at our workplace. Office housework is um, for instance, putting on the morning coffee before the stand-up, taking notes at meetings, cleaning up the table after lunch, planning for office parties. On the other hand, we have glamour work. Uh, and glamour work in our case, in our industry, is technical tasks. The tasks that we are here to do. That's why we're in this industry. Uh, and glamour work more, it's more likely to result in promotions. And studies show that women and people of color do more office work and have less access to glamour work than white men do. And the studies also show that the reason for this is not that uh, the minorities want to do the office house work, but often, often they're assigned to do it or they're feeling the pressure. They're feeling like they have to do it. So we have to create routines so that office work is evenly distributed at a fair rate. And to compensate for the gender gap and to show that uh, one is supporting female developers, many companies are creating uh, women-only spaces. This is uh, spaces where you, you might, uh, women might go to hear a talk, to uh, conversate about their daily job. Perhaps they'll try to give a talk about something they're passionate about for the first time. It might feel like a safe place for many because they can talk without being interrupted and ignored and judged. But I want to talk about some of the issues that we have with these women-only spaces. They're, by the word, per definition, they're exclusive. And we have minorities. We have people who are not identifying themselves as, selves as either female or male. We have uh, non-binaries, trans uh, gender queer and trans people and do they have safe spaces they can go to we have so much mi many minorities that we can have an, at our workplace do they have safe places another thing that we fear is uh, that companies are using this these women only spaces as we would say in a region, a resting pillow, which is not a positive term. It's um, so that the, so that the companies can point at some action they're having. We have these women-only spaces. Uh, and don't do anything else. So if these are the only actions that is being taken towards diversity, and in this case, gender diversity, and nothing else, then that's not nearly enough. All genders are not equal when it comes to economic participation, 
job opportunities, education, health, and political empowerment. While the world has achieved gender, gender equality, women and girls still facing discrimination and violence in every part of the world. Globally, the gender gap has been achieved 68% by, by the, uh, of the world's population. And it means that there is still 32% that remains to be closed. However, most of the countries have gender gap over 50%, and only 14 countries have been, a, have been achieved over 80% of the gender gaps. <coughs> the most gender equal country in 2018 was Iceland. Last year, they made it actual, actually illegal to pay women less than men. For instance, Norway, the second most equal country, has still a work to do. In Norway, on average, women earn 25% less than men. And gender gap in educational process is significantly smaller. The average process on gender parity in education has been reduced in the past years. But still, according to UNESCO, 750 million people are not able to write or read. And two thirds of them are women. So in my opinion, education is the first step in closing gender gaps. And we need to teach our boys and girls and prepare them for a better future. As we know, women in IT has shaped the evolution of the technology. They were among the first programmers in the industry. And in, in 1991, they reached a height of 36% in IT jobs. But it has been reducing since, and today is around 25%. In the same period of time, women's participation in other fields of science has been increased. So the question is that what has happened in the meantime with women and IT? We have to have diversity in mind when we have new job openings at our firm and companies. And how you write your job advertisements matters. The words you use will affect who are, what kind of people are more likely to apply. For instance, studies show that if you're using words like code ninja, superhero, rockstar, hacker, women are less likely to apply. And do you, without, perhaps without meaning it, you specify gender? For instance, at our company, the developer will choose his own laptop. Then you specified that is a he. And then you also make uh, women less likely to apply. And the pictures that you use are sending signals. Um, if you're using a picture of, uh, for instance, a team that is all white men, you might see that, OK, in this picture, it looks like they're having fun, because I know them, and I like them, and they're cool people. But if you don't know them, if you're not a white man, then you instinctively might feel different. You instinctively will feel like, oh, they don't look like me. Or I don't want to be the only not white men in that team. So you're sending signals. Uh, and you have to be aware of the signals that you send by the words you use and the images that you use. You also have to take a look at the requirements that you specify. For instance, is it necessary to have a university degree in computer science to apply for the job? Or is it something that you just write out of habit, or that you think it's a nice to have feature? Perhaps work experience or uh, interest could easily make up for having not, not having a degree. 
and factors like these will affect who's applying. So you have to keep that in mind. We have to keep that in mind when we write these applications and where we post them. Um, so that we don't scare away the applicants that we want to hire. And that we attract the ones we mean to attract. Also, how we meet the applicants is uh, important. If someone goes into an interview room is, and is met by um, a crew or an interview team and they immediately feel different, they are less likely to accept the job if offered. So if we can avoid having an interview team consisting of all white men, we should avoid that. With technology and IT jobs as one of the most growing industries and the increased demand for employees with high technical expertise, um, we, with this comes that being a developer or otherwise a computer scientist, a technologist, is a quite good guarantee for not being, being unemployed. We also have a good chance of getting high salaries, um, flexible work hours, the opportunity to work from home, uh, job possibilities all around the world and other bonuses, bonuses that often comes with being in our industry. So it's essential for an, equally, an equal society that we uh, can have people from all backgrounds, that the, a career in tech is a more likely career option for those who are underrepresented today. And in order to achieve this, we truly believe that we have to introduce technology and programming as a part of the school curriculum and a part of the mandatory school curriculum from an early age. And this is both for raising uh, awareness uh, in general in the society, but also to try to trigger an interest in the kids and the youth and make them more suited for tomorrow's job, whatever it is. But people, uh, so that people in our industry um, in the future will be from all kinds of backgrounds. Those who grow up without a computer at home, those who are statistically less likely to enter universities, all that so that our industry a career in tech is not a career just for the elite and a few lucky others. In Norway, we see that boys have a higher dropout of school rate than girls. And if these boys have a basic computer uh, understanding, basic programming skills, we might be able to employ more of them. Perhaps the way back to school is shorter if you have these skills, if you have basic programming uh, understanding. Perhaps that's a shorter way back uh, into a job if you're bored of and not feel like you don't belong in a school. The world's population in 2018 was 7.7 .7 billion. Of those, over 4 billion people were connected to the internet. It means that more than 3.6 billion people were not connected to the internet. Those who were not internet users tend to be poorer and less educated. And most of them were girls and women. Each year being digitally connected becomes ever more critical. Sooner or later, every job and interactions will require digital skills. And increased technology and digital skills are the benefits of the public services will lead to improve health, education, and will help older and isolated people to get connected, and will also improve social services. 
So in 2020, in almost a year, there will be four times more devices connected to the internet than today. So the, de the demand is increasing. By 2030, every fourth position in the IT will be vacant due to the lack of expertise. For instance, with the rapid changes in the, changes in the world, gender gap of artificial intelligence is an in-demand skill set of the future. Globally, there's only 22% of all the AI professionals who are female. So we have the population being biologically women, we deserve to consider their perspective as well. In a hyper-connected world, we need to think about the challenges that we may face and the changes that our technology today will change the future. And we still need to think how we recruit and how we should motivate and keep the people that we have today. As a company, we should consider who we are, what we want to achieve, and how we should get there. If we do not change the diversity that we have today, we will create even greater divisions between men and women, and we will exclude minorities. The best form of learning happens at job. We learn from our role models and in our work environments. Globally, there's only 34% of all the managers in the tech industry who are women. And only 5% of all the CEOs who are women. We have the lack of role models at school, job, media, parliaments, public speaking, and so on. And in many countries, these numbers are more than 90%. So diversity is all about the equalities between individuals. Being a part of diverse group makes us more creative. We can see several perspectives and we can associate multiple points in different ways. There are several studies that show diverse and inclusive Inclusive companies are more productive, innovative, and can collaborate better. Diverse companies are able to improve their customer orientation, employee satisfaction, and decisions making, which all will lead to achieving better results for the company. Diversity is the definition. Inclusion is the action. So we should not only focus on the number, how many different people from different genders and backgrounds we have doesn't necessarily show how inclusive we are. We have to make inclusive environment where every member of the team is valued, respected, and can fully contribute. We should remember that diversity is not only important for the tech itself, but is also important for those who create tech and their users. Data shows that having LGBT-friendly policies are associated with high firm of value and profit. Companies with different uh, and diverse background have 35% more likely uh, better financial returns, and companies with gender diversity have 15% more chance to have better financial returns compared to other companies in the industry. We have to bring the work towards a more inclusive culture and work environment with us in our daily job. This is continuous work. It's not done by one email, one survey, uh, or one workshop. Diversity and inclusion must be a factor in all of our actions, how we communicate, who we hire. They must be visible in how we organize our, our companies and our organization and our teams. We must, we must raise awareness and understanding so that, and we should include everyone at our company in this process. By, uh, so that everyone can contribute to be, create 
being a part of creating the work environment and culture that we want. When doing this, one common perception one might meet is that, yeah, but that, does, that bad culture and stuff, the harassment, the discrimination, that doesn't happen here at our place. Nah. And while that might be the case, how could you know? Just because you haven't seen it, heard it, or experienced it, just because you haven't seen, heard, or experienced any harassment, discrimination, doesn't mean it doesn't happen. How can you be sure that that's not a false negative? And it's important that perceptions and quotes like that is not left alone, because if that is being said, and someone who uh, hears it and thinks that, oh yeah, everyone thinks that, and the, that person have experienced harassment, discrimination, then they might never dare to speak up, they, or they might leave because they feel like they're actually essentially being told that they're wrong. We have to create spaces and a culture where we can talk about inclusion and the cultural problems, about how to increase diversity and take care of the, and make a good workplace for everyone. We ha so we have to raise awareness and understanding so that we feel safe around our managers, our coworkers, and our teammates. We need clear guidelines for how, uh, what behavior, what culture uh, is wanted and acceptable in our workplaces and in our communities, at conferences. And these guidelines must not only be written in some large buzzword document or printed on with some nice fancy words on a wall. They have to be recognizable, recognizable in everything that we do, in all our actions, who we promote. If someone is harassed or discriminated, they should know who they can tell, what the procedures are, and they should not need to feel, uh, they should feel safe, they should not feel unsafe, they shouldn't be afraid to tell someone about the harassment or, dis or discrimination that they were exposed to. Having a diverse workplace is not a nice to have feature. It's a serious issue that needs serious action. So instead of looking at the diversity as a side project where underrepresented group can work on, we can work all together to achieve an environment where everyone is invited and can be a part of the process in the whole organization. Because working together to develop a diverse workplace makes us more innovative and more productive. And it's really good for our organization as well. So in tech industry, we want quick solutions. But making a diverse workplace is not something that can happen overnight. Change happens one word, one act, and one person at a time. To achieve better goals, and deliver better products, we need to think differently. We have to get involved and create environments where everyone can feel belonging. Practice to be open and accept the fact that we do and think differently. Take a risk and try new things. Leadership should also remember that diversity doesn't belong to a specific group and they need to improve the culture as a business, business imperative. Leadership should be open and hire new people. They need to identify differences and make teams based on that. <coughs> make teams with people who not only look different, but they think and do things in their own ways. And one more thing, we should remember that we cannot accept one minority in our team to represent all the minorities. So, 
turns sympathy to empathy. Because sympathy is what we are feeling for, and empathy is what we're feeling with. Sympathy is telling someone that you understand them without actually knowing what they're going through. But empathy is to get involved with, to show that you care. So you can be the change. You can change the dynamic in the room if something is said that is not OK or someone is not being seen. Then just do something, say something. Because social changes small start with small steps. We need to create an inclusive and diverse culture at our workplace, in our communities, and in our industry. No one should leave the industry because of unfairness, discrimination, or harassment. We need all kind of people on board to create better solutions for our users and society. Making our industry more likely will also, and including more diversity in our companies, will also reduce inequalities in the society. And having a more diverse workforce in tech and IT will hopefully m make sure that we don't make uh, more discriminating products and solutions, we, that we make less products that is reinforcing prejudice and stereotypes. So hopefully tomorrow, selfie app filters will not uh, make the next generation of youth think that having blue eyes and perfect, flawless, light skin is what they should look like. Thank you. <laughs>